Hello folks and welcome to my review of the Genesis GV80, the largest car available in the UK from luxury brand Genesis. If you haven't heard of Genesis before, they're the luxury arm of Hyundai. And when I say luxury, I mean luxury. I have already reviewed a couple of Genesis vehicles on my channel and I've been pretty much blown away by them to be fair and I'm developing a little bit of a love affair for the brand. But will this one buck the trend? Keep watching and find out. This is a two and a half litre all wheel drive monster of an SUV. It's got 304 brake horsepower. This one's a 2.5 litre petrol version and it really is a lovely engine. I have encountered this engine before and despite the fact that it's only four cylinders, it really has the feel of a six cylinder. It's very smooth, delivers the power effortlessly. It's a nice, nice thing to drive. So these cars start at about £56,000. This one's in luxury line trim and has plenty of optional extras thrown onto it. So this one's actually about £69,000. Claim combined MPGs around about the 28 mile mark. Uh, in reality, you're probably going to get 23, 24, probably a little bit higher when you do those longer runs. You're not wanting for boot space in this one. It's got 735 litres of boot space, which is epic. There is a seven seat variant available as well. Those, this one is a five seater that I'm currently in. So this is the third Genesis car that I've been lucky enough to uh, review. And I've sort of fallen in love with this brand a little bit. I just cannot get over the build quality and the quality of the interiors. They're just so good. Uh, this car, being a big beast that it is, benefits from a chunkier steering wheel than I've become used to in other Genesis vehicles. And I like it despite my childlike hands. So I've just recently tested the Genesis G80, which is more or less a saloon version of this car, if you want to look at it that way. And uh, the one thing that was a slight letdown for me on that was despite the level of refinement in the cabin, the ride quality didn't quite match. With this one, I think that problem's been eradicated. It's much, much smoother. I'm on a very bumpy road here and it's soaking up the bumps very well. Uh, it's not a sporty ride in any way, shape or form, but why do you want a sporty ride in a large SUV? I think more people that are buying a, an SUV of this size want comfort rather than, you know, rock hard suspension. Got different drive modes to select from, eco, comfort and sport, and also special settings for different types of terrain. So we've got snow, mud or sand. Although it's very quiet in this cabin, you do get a bit of noise from the tyres, which is surprising really. They're huge 22 inch wheels on this, which are glorious things to look at. But despite the fact they're large wheels, there is still a decent amount of tyre thrown into the mix. You've got every creature comfort you can imagine inside this cabin. Uh, you've got heated seats, heated steering wheel, cooled seats. You've got a really effective climate control system with separate controls for those sitting in the back. Head up display, sat nav system with augmented reality. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, surround view cameras, parking sensors, the wing mirrors dip when you pop the car into reverse. Every little creature comfort you can imagine is on this car and it's great. It's also got a very trick key fob remote parking system. So if you find yourself needing to park or remove the car from a very, very tight space, you can do it with the key fob. Some footage of that now. It seems like a bit of a gimmick, but if you've got a really tight garage or you return to your car and someone's parked too close to you, it could actually be a really useful little function. Very nicely balanced brakes on this car, ladies and gents. The discs and calipers are huge, so it's no surprise that the brakes are good. But some manufacturers nowadays tend to set the brakes to almost an on-off function. Uh, these deliver the braking power very, very nicely and it feels very natural underfoot. So as you would expect from a Genesis, we've got absolutely premium quality materials. Literally everything you touch feels good. You've got this huge 14 and a half inch widescreen display here. It is a touch screen, but you can also use this natty little dial here. You've got physical dials for the volume, which you know I love. And you've got just the right number of physical buttons, dials and touch controls. Digital instrument cluster here is very, very clear. Great visibility in the back, especially when you consider the size of the vehicle. It really is quite good visibility in this. You've got that wonderful Hyundai Genesis thing where you stick the indicator on and it shows you the blind spots or a video feed up in your central cluster. Got wireless phone charging here, USB ports, 
hidden cup holder. Look how softly that opens and closes. Oh, really cavernous little cubby here. And this center console is kind of floating, so you've got additional storage space under there. Really great cabin design and top class material quality. I should also mention that the sat nav system that's built into the car has got an augmented reality function. So you'll get your maps, but it will also actually broadcast a live camera feed with driving instructions over that feed. So you physically see what you're heading towards. One place this car is a bit better than some of the other Genesis vehicles I've had as well is that there's a bit more room for your feet. Although I still think it could be slightly more generous. Big central armrest here with, oh, look at that. A soft close, soft open cup holder. And you can adjust these seats to give yourself more room in the boot. You can also recline them. You can fold them forward with the touch of a button. Very, very nice cabin in here. This car will just eat up long journeys and your passengers are gonna be just as comfortable as you are sitting in the front. Whew, it's a hot one today, guys. It's just filming there and there's some kind of like blossom storm, which was a, a bit nuts. Probably nice and cinematic if you've got the skills, but for a fat bloke with hay fever, not ideal. I'm actually using the seat air conditioning at the moment and it's incredibly effective. On a warm day, it's a nice way to get the twig and berries back down to, to temperature as quickly as possible, I have to admit. So I'm not always the biggest fan of an SUV. I don't dislike them, but um, I'm typically more of a fan of a big estate car or a big saloon car. But I have to admit, as much as it pains me, I'm getting quite used to them now. I really like this a lot. These days, it's rare for me to be doing any kind of trip alone. So I've usually got the wife and kids and the dog in tow and just the, f and just the sheer space that this thing gives you and that huge boot space because we don't travel anywhere light. I must admit, it's a very easy car to live with. So the things I like most about this car, the space, it's epic. The comfort, it's great. The luxurious nature of the interior, fantastic. The wheels I love, the infotainment system, I really am growing fond of this system, especially when you're using Apple CarPlay. There's just so much real estate for, for everything you might want to show. I like the performance of this car as well. 0-60, in a huge car. It doesn't feel as quick as it sounds, but you're certainly never lacking for power. It's also got plenty of torque for the overtakes. Obviously, there's no such thing as the perfect car, so what don't I like about it? Um, the colour. That's kind of it. No, seriously, that is kind of it. Uh, the British Racing Green kind of thing, I think it's actually called Cardiff Green. It's just not my bag, but that's it. it a lot of people like it, don't they? So if I'm gonna be really picky, I'd also say that I'd probably prefer this in a hybrid version, either a plug-in hybrid or a, a mild hybrid, if you like, and a tiny bit more foot room for those rear passengers wouldn't go amiss. And certainly when you compare it to some of its rivals, it's got a hell of a lot going for it, this thing. It is a beast of a car, ladies and gents, a beast. So because of other work commitments and things, I haven't got this one for as long as I normally have them, but still, how am I gonna feel about it going back? I'm gonna be sad. I'm gonna be really, really sad. If I were a single man, which I know is unlikely with a face and body and hairstyle like mine but if i were a single man i'd probably go for the g70 shooting brake out of the genesis range however with my wife and two kids and all the the gubbins that comes with a wife and two kids we do lots of longest journeys in the uk with all of us on board we tend to do a staycation or two and we don't travel anywhere light this is just this would be such a good family car for us such a good family car for us I'll put a link in the video description, by the way, to lease deals on these at the moment. It will be a dynamic link, so whenever you watch this video, it will show you the latest lease deals for them on Lease Loco. I don't think there's anything mind-blowing at the time of recording, but it's worth keeping an eye on it. It will also be worth looking at these things as, as used buys in years to come. A lot of people are still not familiar with Genesis, so it'd be interesting to see what happens with the depreciation on them, and they may make a great sort of two or three-year-old buy for some of you. So it's worth keeping an eye on that. So when you think of the competitors to this, it's gonna be things like the BMW X5, 
It's going to be the Audi Q7. They're big Merc SUVs. It's those kind of things. And believe you me, this competes with all of them. I guess what the model range is currently lacking is a hybrid or a plug-in version, but I'm sure they will arrive in the fullness of time. As we know, Genesis vehicles have been available in other markets for quite a long time, but now they've come to the UK, and I think they've done so with their best foot forward. These vehicles are very, very good. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please bite the bullet, click subscribe. If you are already subscribed, make sure you've got that bell icon clicked and make sure you give this one a thumbs up. It makes a massive difference, believe me. I'm gonna pop my social media links up here as well, and I'd love you to follow me on the social channels. I hope you enjoy this. I tried to make my reviews as honest as possible, and I hope to have lots more of them coming very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.